This thing's just gotten out of their control and they don't have to do about it anymore. Take the first step towards online privacy. Get NordVPN. What follows are extracts from a much longer conversation which you can find on Odyssey, bit.ly slash crypto rich Odyssey. Hi everybody, it's Friday the 14th of June at 20 to 8 British summer time in the UK and with you Tom it's five minutes, five hours earlier. Whatever. And but interestingly enough, the French tenure is rising still in yield. So while everybody else is running into safe haven assets like gold, like the German Bund, which is the safe haven asset of Europe, or the American US Treasury, 10-year Treasury, they're running out of French debt. They're running, they're neutral on Italian debt. And, you know, they're kind of neutral on silver, and but oil is up a little bit, and the euro got crushed. Now, that makes sense because what's happening here? People are selling euros to buy German bonds. People are selling euros to buy US treasuries. They're selling stocks as well. They're going into a complete risk-off environment, not ri not taking risk. You know, so now you got to ask yourself, now you get into the really murky shit of saying to yourself, well, did, are they inviting a French sovereign default at this point? Davos? Are they trying to, in, are they trying to incur the, uh, roll with this thing as best as possible. They're going to lose the election. So if you're going to lose the election, wouldn't you want to create the default that you want to create anyway? These people want to default on all this debt. And then issue a digital euro. Lagarde was out there the other day, like literally yesterday, I think, saying, well, you know, if we don't embrace CBDCs, the central banks will cease to exist. Well, your central bank will cease to exist. My central bank over here on the other side of the pond is like, dude, we're fine. We got plenty of money. We got plenty of capital. We got plenty. I mean, we are, we we're okay. We don't have to. We don't have to. But the Lagarde is literally saying, "I have no other options now but to default on our debt." So what you're suggesting is Davos, WF, want to participate, precipitate a sovereign debt crisis in France in order to make it really, really shitty for who comes along afterwards. Well, there's that, and blame it on them. Just like they're trying to, they're going to, they're going to do the same thing with Trump. They're going to try and blame the recession that's coming on Trump. They're going to try and blame every. They're going to try and blame the war on Trump and whatever they've got. They're going to try and do all that stuff, and then they're all going to leave the scene. But they, how does it play into the the drain from the eurozone, the euro dollars into the U.S.? Well, once it once it starts, what they're desperately trying to avoid is any kind of sovereign debt crisis. Where now we're talking about the center of the EU. Italy, France, and Germany. We've had all the periphery, peripheral states blow up. Now it's the core states. And the only thing left at that point is to allow them to collapse, crash the euro, replace it with a digital euro, go to perpetual bonds to pay off the old bondholders. We got to, you know, and uh, default on the debt, but pay them, you know, a perpetual debt, and they're never getting your capital back, right? That's a default. Liken it to credit card debt. With just a much larger scale, at some yep. point you can't borrow any more to keep up with the current repayments, and it has to collapse. And then when it collapses, you've got no way of paying all the people required yep. to keep the whole thing going. Yep. Yep. No, I know. It's like you've run out of being able to pay off your Visa with your MasterCard and your MasterCard with your Discover card and your Discover card with your Amex. And then, oh, by the way, your Amex is due at the end of the month. Yeah. Like, because, you know, I mean, that's where you are. And like, and we're very close to that moment where the, the EU is now using the Amex card, where yeah. they got till the end of the month. I just, I don't see the European Union surviving another five years. It's like, I don't see Ukraine as a country surviving the next five years. I don't think it's going to, I don't even think Ukraine is going to be a country in five years at this point. And to see here, Martin basically say, yeah, 20, 2028, 2029, I think, you know, the European Union collapses. All their and machinations it's, show no regard for the interests of the European people. It's all self-serving. Oh, they hate us. Yeah. So well, no, they hate you. Like, I mean, does, do we need to like make it any more abundantly clear than watching these people like operate? Like, they hate you, and they they in, they institute policies that are 
purely and utterly detrimental to you. And you could make the argument it's because they, you know, they they're drowning, so you know they'll they'll kill anybody they need to to keep from drowning. Or they are just so nihilistic that they're like, you know what, world's going to end anyway. What the fuck it? Well, I think you know, I'm going to get mine. I think it's more to do with their own, preserving their own power, their own self interest over the bodies of millions and millions of European people. Yeah. And I want to bring it back to Russia's assets, the European Union. Is sure. it just the interest they're going to use? Yeah, it's just the interest, it's just the interest now. They're so what they're going to use? Is, what they're going to use is they're going to use the interest as to back collateral on as collateral to back a loan. Like, how is that? Well, it's not seizing the like. Yeah, it is. You've like you've pledged the the interest of somebody else's assets as collateral against the loan that you made to their enemies. Well, because we're going to win the war and then we're going to steal the and then we're going to steal everything back. Like, no, you're not. There. I mean, the only way they the only way NATO wins this war with Russia is if you define winning as surviving as like one person's more than the Russians surviving a nuclear holocaust. Like, this is the way that the Russians are fighting the war in Ukraine. Send more cups so we have more shit to blow up and drain you dry. That's what we want to do because that's our best path towards winning. So what's their plan? Well, their plan is to collapse the entire current financial system into a new one, create a a a, a great a, a new Great Depression so unbelievable that we have to go to war, and then we kill off an entire generation of men that we don't want to and and women that we don't want to pay for and all the rest of it. This is part of their depopulation agenda. This is part of all, all of it. And at the end of the day, what they're trying to do is they're trying to preserve their capital. You think these people have, have you think these people don't own gold? You think these people don't own fucking railroads? You think these people don't, you know, are, are you kidding me? What the fuck? Of course they do. They're trying to thread the needle. And it's a very, very difficult needle to thread. Yeah. Where they they get through this period, they collapse the system and retain all of their power and retain all their money. Yeah. And I don't think they're going to do it this time because I think there are too many people who see the playbook. Yeah. But I, I think if you, want, if you want to see how a Labour government would look like in the UK, you just go look over to Ireland. That's our future under Starmer. More, right. more, more immigration, illegal migrants, unvetted. More conflict between the host community and the migrants, more of the, more destruction of our farming um, production. Yep. Um, and was it Labour saying the other day they're going to have introduce they're going to do LTNs and ULEs and they're going to drive that even further? And then people are going to get more and more pissed off. There's going to be more and more resistance, more and more up unrest. Yep, yep. Now bringing it back to the UK political scene, here's my cursory read on it. Sure. So Farage's Reform Party is getting more and more popular. They called yep. the election in order to stave off, I think, Galloway's Workers' Party as an assault mm -hmm. to Labour, to Labour. Yep. Now, so, be, so that he doesn't get more support because that's because what they want, what the, what the WF want, they want Starmer in power uh, so they can do the Great Reset on steroids. So yep. they're going to cap, de kneecap the Workers' Party. But now Farage has come out of the shadows. Reform is mm -hmm. rising. There are people yep. who will never, ever vote Labour, just like there are people who will never, ever vote Tory. They'll right. abstain or not turn up or whatever, right? I do not consent rather than vote for the opposition party. Right. So that now, and the challenge that I can see that Labour has is nobody likes Starmer. Nobody right. no, likes terrible. Starmer. Nobody yeah. really likes the Labour Party. They don't have any vision. They're hemorrhaging members. They don't have any money. So then Sunak is doing a much, much worse job, as bad as possible, to lose the election and to yes. give it to Labour. Yep. It's that is exactly what's going on. That's clearly what's going on. Clearly what's going on. And, the, the, and that's why they had to go for this as quickly as possible. I mean, Donald Trump just finally met the other day. Here's the most, okay, all this shit happened this week, right? And what's the most significant thing in my mind? Of all the things that have happened in the last five days, Donald Trump met with the major CEOs of the United States, including Jamie Dimon, Tim Cook, and others. Okay. And then the next morning, he comes out and he says, hey, I want to replace the income tax with tariffs. Before we do, I just want to remind people now, because I played this as a pre-roll, especially if you're in the UK and you are opposed to how your government is spending your taxes on war, on the Great Reset, on net zero, or even if you just want to hold on to the money because so you've got something to deal with, some support in dealing with the cost of living crisis, because the governments are the one who are causing this. 
they're not supporting us at all. They're not taking care of us. They're worsening it. So bit.ly slash make war history. So we've survived catastrophes. We've survived the sun going micronova. We've survived the planet tilting on its side, most likely. We've survived all these things. We can survive Klaus Schwab and Keir Starmer. Right. Tom, thank you so much. It's really, really great. All the links in the description below. Go follow his work. Please share this video. Please go check out bit.ly slash make war history. Bit.ly slash make war history. Take care of yourself and take care of each other. All the best. Bye-bye.